this series continues to be more than I ever expected from it. I didn't find myself enjoying this episode quite as much, surprisingly, more than likely just due to having higher expectations after the premiere, but there were still many parts of the episode that I enjoyed. Starting with the storyline set in the past, this continues to give me my favorite scenes of the series. We've never seen Monarch or Titans this far back in time. Everything we've gotten from this franchise, for the most part, has been in the 2010s, so going 60, 70 years back in time to see when humans first discovered these different creatures is fascinating to watch. It feels like we're constantly learning and getting brand new information alongside the characters. When we catch up with the story in this episode, it's two years after what we saw in the Philippines from the premiere, when they first encountered their first titan. The big development here is gaining the funding of the United States Army and government. It's a big step for a few independent scientists, and we really get to see how this changes what they're doing. Despite Shaw's reaffirmation, they don't trust the general, because they aren't used to someone else having such a large role in their research. And this mistrust turns out to be correct when the general delivers them 150 pounds of uranium in bond form, rather than raw which was implied upon their request. In terms of story, there wasn't really anything massive about the storyline that grabbed my attention or felt like a game changer. We had heard about this failed test to nuke Godzilla in the original film from 2014, and of course we know the creature survives the attack. I was expecting for there to be a moment at the end when they see Godzilla's shadow disappearing back into the ocean, but we never got that, and based on the continued conversations afterward, it seems like they still believe the creature to be dead, which makes me excited for the future, because at some point, he's going to reappear and cause massive concern among the US Army. I just hope that his attack on San Francisco isn't the next time he appears, and we actually get to see these same characters react to Godzilla's survival. The big strength of this past storyline continues to be the characters for me. The chemistry between the three of them and the acting here just works so much better for me than in the present day storyline. The acting and reactions by the characters during the H-bomb explosion gives the moment a deeper emotional level to it. Without what we got, it would have been easy to take the preemptive side of the general and the army and want to kill all of these creatures before they ever become a real threat to humanity. They're peaceful now, keeping their distance, but what happens if they get too close? Better to get rid of them now while we have the chance. But getting these reactions from Keiko and Billy makes the audience consider the scientific and humanitarian aspect of it all too. That these are as of yet innocent creatures who we know nothing about, who have done nothing wrong, and whose study could yield very important discoveries. And despite the funding and ultimately blank check they receive from the army at the end of the episode, despite it feeling like the cast and story is growing as more people learn about these creatures, they still find a way to make it feel like these three characters against the world. Keiko and Billy are still able to protect and study these creatures by limiting what they tell Shaw, so that he doesn't have to lie to his superior officers. Sadly, I think it'll result in Shaw not knowing as much as he could have, which would limit what we learn through him in the present day storyline. I'm also worried that it may cut him out of the story somewhat in the past, since he now isn't supposed to be with them and learn everything that they do, but I don't want to critique the show for something that hasn't happened yet. Moving on to the present day storyline, it had its rough moments, but it got better as it went along. We immediately pick up with an older Shaw breaking out of his retirement home, and while I enjoyed this group of characters for the most part in the premiere, they felt bland here in comparison to Kurt Russell's Shaw. Despite his older age, Russell brings a youthful energy and vitality to his character that makes him fun to watch. He wants to go on this adventure to discover the truth, whereas all of the other characters act like they're forced to go on the trip and that they didn't want to. I've actually liked what we've gotten from May. She hasn't gotten very much to do, but she had a scene in this episode that at least let us as an audience see inside of her a bit and why she's still here when she has no connection to their father. Her decoding these tapes upended her life and her business with Monarch after her now, so she was forced into this and really has no choice but to go through with it until it's over. I feel like she's been in the background of scenes for so long, but I would love for her role to grow in future episodes. Kintaro and Kate, on the other hand, were characters I didn't find interesting to watch, almost at all. Kintaro feels very one-note not expressing much emotion or humanity. There are times when the character just feels like a robot on screen. Kid at least brings some emotion and flavor to the scene, but for much of the episode, she's just the Debbie Downer, constantly complaining or reluctantly following the others. It fits with her character, but eventually it just felt like overkill. It wasn't until her brief conversation with Du Ho in the plane that she seems to take a different approach to life and this adventure, to the point where she's laughing alongside Shaw after the rough landing. It's a dramatic change from where we started with her in this episode, and I'm hoping that they'll soon be able to find a middle ground with her, because she has definitely had some moments where I really like the character, it's just not consistent. After heading to South Korea to meet up with Shaw's friend Juho, 
who we never really learn what their connection is. The group then heads towards Alaska where their father supposedly died. One of the biggest aspects about this storyline and series as a whole that I've enjoyed is the gradual uncovering of the mysteries and monsters. I was surprised that Godzilla appeared this early on in the series. I was expecting a larger buildup for him. But in the present day we got another new creature that's a bit smaller, almost resembling a mole. I feel like we didn't get much from Monarch other than the brief scene with the goons and then May searching through the data to find where their father was heading, but it was sufficient for me. The group makes their way to Alaska and finds a campsite set up by their father sitting next to the crashed plane. It did make me wonder how he survived out here for so long, especially when there's a giant mole monster running around, but assuming he is still alive, we'll get an explanation of everything then. With the way the episode ended on a cliffhanger of them being attacked by the creature, I think it's safe to say the next episode will start off with them being rescued by their father, showing how he's fended them off for so long, and giving us a nice little reunion before they have to figure out a way back with both planes wrecked. I did really like how the episode initially led us to believe that the plane crashed, before building the tension through Duho and the claw marks in the hull. I really would have liked to see more of his character though, rather than him dying right after being introduced. What did you think of this Monarch episode? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like the video, and subscribe for coverage of the Monsterverse. And remember to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Thank you all for watching, and remember, the Force will be with you. Always.